From the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. All right, check this out. The UA Townsend Sphere. What's inside? How does it work? What capsule did they use? Our buddy King Korg over at Group DIY has broken this down expertly. So King Korg has, has tested more capsules than pretty much anybody I can think of on this planet. He really knows his stuff. And what I really like is that he is so he is so generous with his information. So he's given us permission to use this post and his photos. Now, welcome to King Korg's Capsule College of Knowledge. Class is in session. So King Korg has discovered that inside the sphere is the 797 Audio CY002. Insanely high quality, reliable, and consistent. I like those words when describing a capsule. And if you look at this thing and you're saying to yourself, self, that looks like a cheapy, cheapy capsule. How could that be special? Well, check this out. So what he's done, what King Korg has done over here, is he's plotted the front and back of the capsule. Frequency response of the front and back of the capsule. And it's identical. You couldn't, you can't imagine getting any closer than that. Now this little spike here, that's a little testing anomaly. But look at that. It's like dead on. Front and back of the capsule. Now that is high manufacturing tolerance right there. And the way they achieve this, they use a high-end de-emphasis circuit. So it's a couple, it's really a couple of resistors, a, a capacitor. It's very much the same way. Now this is a similar graph of the Studio Project C1 mod from Microphone Parts. Basically the same mod. Two 10K resistors, one nanofarad cap. Right, so you're getting the same high-end de-emphasis, pretty much. And what that does is instead of getting this curve with the capsule, because, you know, the K67 center terminated capsule is bright on purpose. So instead of getting this, the de-emphasis allows you to get this. So that's what's inside the mic. And if you're looking at it and you're like, what is this notch? Why does this notch happen? Well, guess what? It's the head basket. All that stuff that we talked about when we were comparing the DLX and the LX, right? The extra resonance in the head basket of the DLX that was causing that was causing it to feel like a little bit further away from the source than the LX. The LX, which you're hearing right now, you're hearing me on the LX through the uh, Bronner VM1 TLM103 blend, which is my favorite sound on the mic. So this is a much tighter sound than the similar sound on the DLX, and it's caused by the head basket. So right here, you have head basket on and head basket off. Head basket off is the blue curve right here. And see how it fills in a lot of that notch between four and a half and eight? So that is exactly what the head basket is doing right here. That's exactly the head basket resonance. And as you can see, it doesn't really greatly affect, I mean, it does affect really here this roll off. But really anything below that, it's really once you kind of get here, right around 4K, that it starts to be significant. So that's pretty neat. So then what happens is this, oh, and actually I should point this out. Right here, you go to this article and check this out. If you want to build your own sphere mic, <laughs> that's what he's done. He's created basically the roadmap, how you can build your own sphere mic using really any flat circuit. And what he has discovered is really a bunch of EQ plot points, right? So you plug these into your EQ. And you get this same de-emphasis right here without having to go in and build any hardware little circuit in there. So that's pretty neat. So use a flat circuit, use that EQ, and you get this, right? With this capsule. Pretty neat. So inside the sphere, this is pretty complex stuff. So each signal, the front and back of the capsule, is fed into a separate op amp. So you have dual op amps right here, right? Pretty much parallel circuits running through this TLC0701 op amp, right? Dead quiet, crazy low THD, super, super, super clean. And then it's run through these two parallel halves of the circuit. Okay, that's pretty neat, right? So, and he says it pretty much the voltage multiplier, what, what really ups the phantom voltage from 48, 46 really, to about 60, is this uh, voltage multiplier that's built in here. Very similar to the way they, they institute it in the Rode NT1. So that helps attribute to why the mic is so quiet. And this is, this is really neat. So it goes in and it's split through more op amps here. Really very clean signals. Super, super clean signals sent to the modeling. So that's what you get. And then, so here are more pictures, a little bit more close up of the board. This is really interesting. 
Let's close on this. So what he has found, you know, that the mic sounds really great on its own without any modeling. But comparing the audio shootout and the measurements done at Audio Test Kitchen, which were done in a very, very high-end uh, anechoic chamber, so they should be pretty accurate. So according to the, the measurements at Audio Test Kitchen, the Sphere Sony C800 model and the original are virtually indistinguishable. That's an, that's an incredible claim. Now look at the inside of a Sony C800. Look at that capsule. Does that look familiar? Now he's not saying that they're the same capsule, but they do look very similar. And the two mics do share a very same head basket size and shape. So that may attribute to why the C800 model on the Sphere is really, really great. So, you know, but that's for you to decide how close it is to the original. But check it out. So he also has an addendum here about the LX. And his discovery is that the LX actually does not have the de-emphasis curve built into it, that that is actually baked in now into the software, which may attribute to uh, the, 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 uh, the concept of the Sphere being a more slimmed down, cost-efficient version of the original. So, you know, you make, it's only a couple of parts, right? But you make uh, 10,000 of them and that cost builds up. So this, again, look at this. This is the heart of the Sphere microphone. <laughs> the 797 Audio CY002. All right. Now I invite you to go to this post and check it out yourself. So big, big thanks to King Cork for letting us check out his work right here. I, I think this is an outstanding analysis of the inside of the Sphere. And if you go to groupdiy.com and read it yourself, you, you will get all the nitty gritty. And look for King Korg's other posts because this guy really, really knows his stuff. So anyway, Nation, what do you think? What do you think of this capsule? What do you think of this fear breakdown? I need to know. All right, you know what to do. Leave a comment. Until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov on the Sphere LX, fading to black.